Northwest. Uh, I had taken a little bit of piano, um, and where I'm from, you start in fifth grade, and you don't just go into a classroom like group by instrument, like you just sort of pick what you want to play. And this poor band director had to deal with every beginning instrumentalist in for um, one period of the day. And that's where I started with percussion. I was really, I remember thinking when I'm, you know, putting my, my uh, preference as far as what instrument, I was so nervous about putting percussion as number one because I was thinking like, well, I'm a girl and girls don't play percussion. And I changed it like the very last second before I handed it, I put, put one, and handed it in and that's how that started. <laughs> and then, um, you know, really after um, doing a little bit of things with uh, drum set a little bit through middle school, I, when I found myself in high school, uh, it, I just wasn't really that inspired by any of that anymore. I, I was playing soccer really competitively and I just, you know, you get busy and now you're in your teenage years and other things start becoming important. And uh, so I actually quit my music program after my freshman year of high school. And then over the summer, um, a very energetic college graduate got the, high, the band director job at my high school and he called every single person that could still be in the band and said, hey, I just got this job, just bought a whole new uh, set of drumline instruments, I've just got this all, you need to come check it out. And, um, and so I gave it another shot and then it's pretty amazing that those next three years um, were really influential, I mean, as far as just going into music. I didn't even know you could major in music, I didn't know what that meant, I didn't know that that would even be something I'd be remotely interested in until I just really started trying. And um, so having a great teacher uh, at the school, that, that really changed my perspective on like, wow, I really could do this. And um, so yeah, that, that sort of led me in that direction to start pursuing music as a career. So, but I, yeah, it's hard to imagine sometimes when I'm telling you about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's pretty accidental. But um, I ended up at, at UNT, my parents, uh, moved to Texas uh, for my dad's job and I remember taking a tour of the music building just while I was visiting on, on Christmas. I had already uh, spent two years at another university in Washington State which was a terrific place and, and a great experience but taking a tour of the facilities at, at North Texas was unlike anything I'd ever seen. I don't think besides being at PASIC and seeing the exhibit hall I'd never seen so many Mervas in one room um, and just the, the opportunity seemed uh, really big there and uh, so I ended up transferring there, and, and uh, you know that's where my exposure to uh, the, the drumline world and, and marching percussion in general really just kind of blew up. Um, well, I remember uh, it's funny we were talking about George. I remember um, when I first started teaching at the Carolina Crown in '98. That was my first year. Again, totally had no idea. Like, oh, we get to talk to the judges after the show? Like, no idea, like, <laughs> what we're doing out there. Um, I met George, he was, uh, I think he was the Pearl Rep at the time. And, um, you know, we just had, I, I don't know, it, it's like you, you meet people and you develop these relationships and getting to know him and Eric over the next couple of years and as that um, expanded into the, the stick market and then Paul made uh, like a, you know, a major commitment for, uh, with the sticks and the mallets now, you know, not a split endorsement anymore. And we really started using the product. Um, that's where it really started, but I think we always like associated it with such a high quality. Like even the, um, the outdoor, and the, well, and the stick part of it was still just, you know, in its infancy, I think at that time, um, you already got a sense of like the keyboard mallets are, you know, second to none. And I remember some of those early years just calling, you know, I could call Eric Johnson, who was just, you know, such a huge inspiration for me as a young teacher and as a, as a young writer at that time. Because um, at that time I was in those early 2000s, I was I was starting to do the arranging uh, with the group um, and collaborate with Paul on that. And um, but just to talk to him about sounds and blends and how you know and be, to be able to talk to the person that started wrapping these mallets in in their garage <laughs> and and actually say you know what what get his input on like what. What we can do out there and what's possible and what kind of sounds um, and you know just kind of work back and forth it, it always just was such a you always felt like you were just dealing with with experts and people that absolutely care about about everything that they're doing and that I think that's infectious and I think that really you know is motivating for us as teachers to know that you know the people that are making this product stand behind it so strongly that you know it makes us believe in it too and we really think that you know, those products over the years, I mean, my God, I'm, I mean, they help us just sound amazing, so. You know, it's, um, 
It's actually, it's really cool. And it's, and it's kind of stems from the fact that, again, I'm not a drum corps, like, originated person. I, I come from more of, like, the concert marimba side of things, and that's, that's really kind of the angle that I always have taken as a teacher is I didn't want to say, like, we're going to play this way inside. And then when you go outside, now it all changes. And I think that we've just stayed true to that approach, I think all the way across the board in the per with the percussion section, honestly, um, from the beginning. And I think that um, with our students, you know, many of them are music majors, they're gonna be teachers, now we're getting the students of the old students uh, in, our, in our groups. And I think that that consistency of approach, I think has really, um, just been something I think that, that has been so important to us and, and really genuine. So from a mallet perspective, um, I used a similar mallet when I was playing, back when I was in graduate school, and you know, I would you know, occasionally call George and say, hey, I'm doing this thing, can I kind of get something like this? And you know, they would always be really gracious and, and help me out. But with the, when it came time to do a, a, a mallet with, uh, for the, the outdoor groups, it was really interesting how we kept coming back to you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like we need to, I, I think at the time there was such a trend with the outdoor mallets where they become so heavy. And uh, you know, you think about all the students that are starting percussion and, and you know, you go through the middle school programs and then you come into high school and you're maybe 14. And you know, you think about these kids and they're having all of a sudden you hand them a set of mallets and you know, it's a totally different experience for them when they maybe have been, you know, played with quote, you know, concert mallets and then now to switch to something so like such a drastic difference and I really wanted it to be something that would not be such a huge transition especially now that we're amplifying I mean every group is amplifying it shouldn't be a situation where we're competing against the volume of you know 80 horns out there and you know you know obviously a lot of that comes down to arranging and and how you you write but at the same time it's, it seems like you know we need to like really figure out like a smart way to do this Otherwise, everything just keeps getting louder and louder in the vault. You know, it's, it seemed like a, a, a just a, a, a path we didn't want to go down. And so Chris, um, I remember asking him, like, I understand we need, we need some added weight. I know we want, we need some weight on there um, to just help project and give us a really, you know, a, a big full sound. But is there anything, like, can we change it at all? Like, does it have to be here? Does it, you know, like, how do we do it? Because most, you know, the Field Series mallets, tend to have the weight added onto the top of the, of the core, right? And what we really wanted to do was just experiment with the placement. And so with the Merma mallet, we moved the weight just to the underside of the core. And um, it's amazing what, the, it was like choking up on a baseball bat. And it really made a huge difference as far as how it feels to the player. You still have the same amount of weight, you know, as you would if it were on the other side, but just those, just moving it a couple of inches, it made just such a huge difference. And um, and I really, you know, what was really important to us, I, again, I still have, like, I think about my marimba sitting at home right now. I have a set of my 4,000 ones sitting on top of it. When I've played concerts recently, um, in the past several years, I, I still use those mallets. I think they sound amazing. We've had students at UNT and others uh, use them on recitals. And um, I just think it's such a versatile mallet that gets just so full and um, not thin, just really solid. And, I think that's what we were really going for. I joke that it has my mouth have a right note guarantee. Um, I always tell all the students that. I think it works. You know, you check the footage. I think they uh, totally come through. Um, with the vibe mallet uh, that's just released this year, um, we really wanted to approach it the same way. And again, the, t the conversations with Chris, like he um, um, with the marimba mallet, we have a synthetic ball core and we really want it to be like a cohesive line of mallets. So the Vibe Mallet is a synthetic core, which I think I believe is the only um, Vibe Mallet that has a synthetic core that's available, not just with IP, but I think just out there. And um, it's just a great sound. You get this this um, this attack, this articulation that's just really really pointed and solid, but yet not offensive, not <laughs> not painful to hear. But really, I think, um, you know, we prototyped them this last summer and I, I think they're just terrific. And so now you have this like entirely like, cohesive um, Marimba and Vibe opportunity. And um, we have a wrap xylophone mallet in there too. I think um, it's funny, we, uh, I love that, that sound of the xylophone blending in with the, the Marimba, but I can't stand it when, you know, all you hear is the xylophone. It's kind of like a piccolo player in a, 
in a band, you can't really hide that. And um, so I think, you know, we, we have a xylo mallet that's wrapped, sounds great on bell, sounds great on the xylophone, and really just it blends it all together. So it's just a really, really unified uh, sound for the ensemble. Um, I really appreciate, on a personal note, I just appreciate this company so much. And it's just such a different level. Like Eric was such a huge inspiration. Like I was talking about like seeing Eric and his groups uh, and at the uh, Cavaliers when he was just really kind of changing the look of what was happening. It's so influential. And even though when you see our group, I mean, we're not necessarily doing a lot of those same things, but it's such an, such an, in, um, just an influential, just such a huge, huge influence on my life as an arranger. Again, he, I felt, was the first, the first person to like really almost demand, I think, in his, I don't know what happened in those design meetings, but it seems like he was the first one to just convince the other members of the design team where he was working that the front ensemble is a really important part of the equation as a, as a voice in the, in the overall musical design, which could then open up all those other opportunities for the other parts of the the puzzle and that just changed everything I think the sounds of his groups like you could tell who you were listening to a mile away you know and such a huge influence on me personally again as an arranger as a teacher and um, and I just love that they are that like you know I see that we have been I feel like we've been really consistent in the way we approach things and things like that and I feel the same about the company and what Eric has stood behind and, and uh, between Eric and George and Everybody we've we've dealt with, it's just been about just good people, and it's like a, it's you know, life's too short to hang out with people and, and deal with people you don't you don't uh, gel with, and I, I just feel like there's just been nothing but um, just support and friendship, and it, again, it's like it's just it's amazing, and it's it's exciting. Like I, I just feel like it's just like we're we're lucky and. You know, I'm just so happy for Eric, obviously, to get the award, and it just seems like such a no-brainer. But yeah, again, as somebody who's just been so influenced and inspired by by uh, these guys, to still just keep getting to work with them and 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 learn, uh, it's just it's amazing.